President Trump kicked off 2020 by ordering the assassination of Qasem Soleimani, the top Iranian general who was considered to be the second most important man in Iran. Everyone's worried what happens next, what kind of retaliation is coming America's way, and whether we're on the verge of some sort of major new conflict in the Middle East, the kind of war that would make Iraq look like a walk in the park. So here are seven things you really should know about Donald Trump and Iran as things heat up. Number one, guess what? Trump, the former real estate mogul and reality TV star with zero background in foreign affairs or national security, doesn't know anything about Iran or about the man he killed, General Qasem Soleimani. Don't take my word for it, take his. Are you familiar with General Soleimani? Yes. I, I, go ahead, give me a little, go ahead, tell me. It, well, he runs the Quds forces. Yes, okay, right. Do, do you expect and his I think behavior- the Kurds, by the way, have been horribly mistreated by us. No, no the not the Kurds, the, the, the Quds forces. The Got that? The president confused the Quds force with the Kurds and didn't have a clue who Soleimani was just a few years ago. Uh, you was giving me name after name, Arab name, Arab name, Arab. Yet last week he gave the order to have him killed from his golf course and apparently was stuffing his mouth with ice cream when the news of the general's death broke. Number two, Trump has long seen a US attack on Iran as a way for the US president to get re-elected. Yeah, re-elected. Again, don't take my word for it. Just listen to Trump himself. Here he is in 2011. Our president will start a war with Iran because he has absolutely no ability to negotiate. He's weak and he's ineffective. So the only way he figures that he's going to get reelected and as sure as you're sitting there is to start a war with Iran. And of course, with Trump, there's always a tweet. In fact, multiple tweets. Yet another reminder that the one word you need to understand Trump is projection. What he accuses others of thinking or doing is often what he himself is thinking or doing. Number three, Trump tore up Obama's Iran nuclear deal in order to launch his very own maximum pressure campaign, which led to this very crisis. But here's the thing, Trump tore up that deal against the advice of his own generals and his own defense secretary, who said it was working. Secretary Mattis, do you believe it's in our national security interest at the present time to remain in the JCPOA? Yes, Senator. I do. Number four, Trump and his people want to blame Iran for 9-11 because they know that'll help them make the case for war. Vice President Mike Pence took to Twitter last week to claim that Soleimani and Iran had helped 10 of the 12 9-11 hijackers, which is not just absurd because Shia Iran and Sunni Al-Qaeda are mortal enemies and the 9-11 report says it's BS to suggest Iran was involved in September the 11th, but also 12 hijackers? Weren't there 19 of them? What on earth is Mike Pence talking about? Number five, the reason he tore up the Iran nuclear deal is that Trump is a hawk and has always been a hawk. So what was Maureen Dowd smoking when she wrote her Donald the Dove, Hillary the Hawk column in the New York Times in 2016? This is a president, remember, who has twice bombed the Assad regime in Syria, reduced Mosul and Raqqa to rubble, vetoed a congressional attempt to end US involvement in the Saudi bombardment of Yemen, and overseen a five-fold increase in drone strikes throughout the region and beyond. Yet on New Year's Eve, the New York Times still insisted on bizarrely referring to this president's, quote, reluctance to use force in the Middle East. Ridiculous. Number six, Trump's belligerence, though, has to also compete with his massive ego. The president is a narcissist who wants to be loved. So as much as he likes blowing things up, he also likes people blowing smoke up his ass. Think about it, if Soleimani was assassinated because he was a bad guy with American blood on his hands, then why hasn't Trump given the order to also take out Kim Jong-un, who basically murdered US student Otto Wombier? Oh wait, Trump has a thing for Kim, right? And then we fell in love, okay? No, really, he wrote me beautiful letters. If only General Soleimani had written love letters to the President of the United States, perhaps he'd still be alive today too. And number seven, Last but not least, it's important to remember that whatever we're discussing, whether it's domestic policy, foreign policy, the economy, Trump is unhinged. That's a constant, that's a given. So when we talk about what he's gonna do about Iran or why he did it, you also have to remember that this is not a rational man, a man who operates within normal parameters. This is a man who accused his predecessor of tapping his phones, who thinks climate change is a Chinese hoax and wants to use nuclear weapons to stop hurricanes. This is a man who gave us Sharpie game. Who's going to hit 
uh, not only Florida, but Georgia could have, uh, was going toward the Gulf. And so this is the man, the deranged, unwell, paranoid, conspiratorial, know-nothing president now getting ready to escalate further with Iran. Happy New Year.